the Mark Larson Show, AM 1170, The Answer, and uh, right here on 1170 in Southern California, everywhere on iHeartRadio and CRN Digital Networks. And if you have our AM 1170, The Answer app, you get connected to all things, even townhall.com, where Katie Pavlich pretty much runs the show. And you, you know, people say I multitask. Uh, Katie Pavlich with us here. Um, what, what else are you doing right now when you're talking with us, Katie? Are you actually on Fox at the same time we're speaking? Because you're, you're so stinking <laughs> busy. You're worse than I am. Moment. Yeah. No, but I'm also a woman. And I, I, heard of, I read a scientific study that women can multitask better than men. Hey, 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 know, hey. Like, Where, whose <laughs> scientific study is that? Whose is that? I'm just saying, you know it's true. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been you've been busy on Fox this week and I'm doing a panel uh this morning at ten thirty our time. So the lovely Leslie Marshall, who I don't think smiles even during the Christmas holiday season, is gonna be uh, the opponent today. So that should be fun. Try to get oh, her. Oh good. Well I will look for you on the telly. Yes, on the telly. And that. I don't know what we're talking about yet because you know how that works. It's like here's your topic, now go. Okay, so Well it's always you know the best when you're sitting there and you've taken an hour to prepare for the topic you've been given and then they change the subject with Oh yeah, that happened on, on air. That happened on Black Friday. It was on opposite Garland Nixon and we were all prepared to talk about Jill Stein and the uh, Don Quixote type recount. And at 30 seconds before coming on, I hear in my ear from New York, uh, Trump just picked this guy who's going to be his legal counsel, and uh, here's the name, and it's all we really know And uh, right now. We'll talk about that. Go. And it's like, yeah, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think about this guy we know right. nothing about? It was, right. it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, but that never bothers you because you multitask as a woman better than men, uh, surveys have shown. <laughs> So I said your piece. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But hey, I, I, that's science. all right. What can I say? Katie, don't be a denier. <laughs> Katie Pavlich, you can find her on Outnumbered and all the other fine shows on Fox News. And, of course, uh, she writes and does great work. Townhall.com. What do you feel? How do you feel when you look at President Obama doing his victory laps in recent weeks where he keeps saying among, oh, by the way, bin Laden's dead. Yes, thanks for that bulletin. But he will say, uh, you know, our, our administration has been scandal free. How does that strike you? You wrote the book Fast and Furious, for example. I mean, literally wrote the book. So how does that sit with you? I mean, you could write an entire, entire encyclopedia series that would fill up an entire room in the Library of Congress about the Obama administration scandal. I mean, where should we start? Fast and Furious was early in the administration, but there was the IRS scandal. There was Palindra. Um, there was the Department of Justice tapping the phones of reporters, including executives and parents of reporters. James Rosen's parents were were one of you know the victims of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and I think people in in the age that we are, with the 140 character tweets and the 24 seven news cycle, tend to forget, you know, the accumulation of of really how many things President Obama got himself in hot water over. Um, And, you know, this week watching him give his speech about how terrorism is is less than it was when he took over is just laughable when you look at the map and the threat here at home. Um, You know, he he keeps using this argument, which the administration has used for years now, that core al-Qaeda is now decimated because... They took out Osama bin Laden, and it really shows the arrogance, because when Osama bin Laden was killed, even the guys who were on the team who went into the room to get him said, look, it's great that we got him, but this doesn't end the threat we're up against. And yet you have Joe Biden and Obama and the entire administration using that as a reason why the threat is not as significant. It's just not true. Right. And they continue this mantra. We hear it here this week. Janet Napolitano, formerly the governor of uh, Arizona, as you know, growing up in Arizona and spending a lot of time here, she did such a marvelous job. And oh, so she was rewarded with Homeland Security. And now she is uh, the, the leader Uber Alice over the UC system here, the University of California. And she's basically saying, hey, you know what? You got to ignore some federal laws. We'll do that. You know, sanctuary and dreamers and, right. and all of this. It, it just keeps encouraging the problem. They don't get it on the left. They don't appear to have learned to anything from the uh, the verdict of the election. It. I just don't think they care. No, I, I they don't care. They, okay. they believe that their ideology means everything. The, you know, the, the ends justify the means sort of thing. So if they have to break a few federal laws to get to their progressive utopia, then so be it. If, if you know, people have to die as a result of illegal immigrants continually breaking laws, being violent inside the country, being deported and allowed to come back here five or six times, so be it. It 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 goes 
to their larger narrative of that being more important to them than putting America first, which is exactly why Donald Trump won. Yeah, Katie Pavlich with us. You can find her at townhall.com. What do you anticipate the left will do since they're now fully into crazy mode? And I'm not talking, you know, Dennis Prager's careful to say, hey, there's liberals, and you respect liberals if they're classic liberals, okay? But but the left is what we're talking about here, the, the lunatic left. You know, Michael Moore saying, oh, it's the end of the earth as we know it. I mean, that's my paraphrase of what he said, but he's, you know, number one, Trump's going to start undoing things with executive orders and then the day after the inauguration that Saturday they're going to do everything they can they'll extend a uh, you know, session of Congress and they will make every move they make to just to 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 penalize to to just destroy everyday Americans they're into berserk mode so what do you expect well, that'll look like worse. in the streets what's going to happen it's going to get worse with the the, the less temper tantrums uh, you know how when you score a touchdown and if you start celebrating too much the other team takes the ball and runs the other way and you lose the game right right, right. Republicans have to be very careful of about getting complacent simply because Donald Trump won. Yes, they had the House and the Senate and, and the White House, and they had a horrible candidate in Hillary Clinton and lost, but they also are professional organizers and professional agitators, and they will be back. And so keeping an eye on what they're doing, understanding what their motives are, and you know, pushing back on their false narrative is really important. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this ridiculous argument. Well, Hillary won the popular vote, so actually she really won the presidency. Uh, no, she didn't. Um, it's yeah. called the Constitution, and that's not how it works in this country. Well, and I guarantee you that if she had won, there'd be no complaints about like, the Electoral College coming from their side. So that's right. got to pay attention to what they're doing, because they're, right. they're here, and it's only going to get worse. I keep expecting, Katie, somebody on the left is going to say, this Electoral College, uh, are they playing in any of the bowl games? I mean, they just have no idea. <laughs> What's, what's coming up on that? Uh, meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, in uh, remarks to the departing, oh, I love saying things like the departing Barbara Boxer, the departing Harry Reid, but the departing Harry Reid, uh, Hillary Clinton came out of wherever she's, I guess, Chelsea's apartment where she's been, you know, rebooted, and she'll come out and say, well, you know, Harry, Harry Reid was, was wonderful and what a great leader, blah, blah, blah. And then she went off on this, quote, fake news thing. Okay, so mm -hmm. th this is the new mantra. And they're really amping this up. And unfortunately, it seems to be getting some traction. What, doesn't that lead to censorship, the very thing that they would say that, that the right would do, that Trump would do? I mean, Obama does have, or the president does have an, what they call the Internet kill switch in an emergency. So, Right. Well, I mean, this goes back to what we've, it's just a different uh, way to make their argument. We've heard for, for decades now that you know people on the right need to, it, what they're saying isn't true, and therefore they should be censored. And we've, we've seen this about talk radio with the Fairness Doctrine. Um, this is just another way for them to make that argument. And I'm sorry, but when Brian Williams is complaining about <laughs> fake news, it's very difficult to take the whole fake news thing seriously. Um, do I think that, you know, there's propaganda? Sure. Um, but the idea that the left is, is, is making this argument is simply just a repackaging of the argument they've tried to make for years to silence conservatives and to give the narrative back to the, the trusted journalists in the media like Brian Williams, who can give us the real stuff. You know, that's right. That's why stuff. he's in exile on MSNBC now. Yeah, I hadn't thought about Brian because there's so many examples, but that's a perfect one. You know, because yeah, the, the joke was that he was everywhere. Yeah. Very concerned about fake news, Brian Williams. Everyone. Yeah, and that's good. Well, you get a lot of the straight stuff online at townhall.com, where Katie Pavlich is uh, toiling every day, multitasking, because as science has proven, uh, women are better. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the fact. I'm just here with the fact. I want I you to send me that. Send me that study. You t text okay. that over to me. All right. All right. Okay. Have a great Christmas. See you. You too. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Katie. Katie Pavlich with us here. Mark Larson Show, AM 1170. The answer. Our number: triple eight three four four eleven seventy.